Hello. Is that guys or quieter? Is the camera on, Joseph? Um, yeah, it is. I'll check again though, just to make sure. Yeah. Is it recording? Yes, it's recording. <laughs> All this down behind it. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> oh, you're just gonna, okay. Yeah. All right, we'll get started. So, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. For all the viewers back home. Um, as you know, this is going to be our meeting or info session slash kind of guideline for the training. Uh, end of this quarter, uh, in the summer, and then fall, talking about training and racing. Um, expect, well, we have a slide about before we're going to talk about this presentation. So, this is the presentation. Is this space? <laughs> Uh, just to introduce myself to those of you who don't know me, I haven't um, been around a lot of practice this quarter. Uh, I have class like three to four days a week. Um, I'm Clancy, I'm a graduate student, a PhD in geography. I've been running for a while, and uh, we're the training officers. For anyone who's new, I'm Nathan. Um, yeah, so, it's about it. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to be going over this presentation, um, kind of quick philosophy of what our training and kind of program is going to be about, uh, expectations in terms of training, racing, commitment, goals, uh, self-explanatory, going over the training, kind of outline agenda of what everything is going to be like, and then kind of some logistics about racing, uh, we get there. So philosophy, um, so this is going to be our first year, uh, if you've been around the club, this is going to be our first year with kind of... Uh, people who are going to be really focused on coaching, um, being fancy, fancy me. Um, and this is going to allow us to have kind of different groups and then individualized training for everyone here. Um, purpose is really just to get faster or more fit, but with structure and planning. Um, so in the past, it's kind of been on off with you know, really detailed stuff or just kind of, you know, oh, we're doing this and kind of winging it. So this year is going to be a lot different. Um, so, get excited. Uh, trust in the training, buy into it. So, I know like, you guys are high school coaches, or maybe you're still being coached by someone, um, but we have a plan, we have an idea, we have a vision. Um, so, if you are interested in the 8K distance at the collegiate level, uh, we think we know what we're doing. So, um, stick to it and you will get faster. Uh, so, of course, we go over this every time, but running is a lifestyle. Um, so you kind of want, if you're looking to do well, you want, well, eventually everything will kind of revolve around running. Um, so if you look at kind of, if you already know the faster guys and the faster guys and girls in the club, um, you know that running is their thing. Um, I know there's some examples of people who have two big things going on in their lives, uh, and it's kind of, you know, they don't come out to practice as often, um, and it's kind of a mix of, you know, balancing one commitment with the next. So running, really, if you want to take it to the next level, um, is going to be the main part of your life, but of course there's balance, so we're all going to be student athletes, uh, most of us, um, so balancing school and running is part of it, so uh, make sure you have an idea of what you're doing. It is what you make it, so I know not everyone's interested in racing, not everyone's interested in uh, going to nationals or whatnot, if you're just here to kind of check it out or just want to get fit, then that's totally fine, but the best way to get fit is with a structured plan so you can track progress and uh, see where you come from. And then science, there's been a lot of talk about this in practice. Um, so we're really trying to focus in on like getting what is right and wrong, or not right and wrong, but what is beneficial and what's not, um, but doing it off of research and uh, the information out there. And then a little quick, something I've been, I've been in a uh, psychology class for a little bit, and there's something called the zone of proximal uh, development. Anyone heard of that? Psychology, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so this, in, in short, you can read it, but yeah, no. um, in short, it's going to be you have uh, imagine a circle. You're in it. Um, you can only do so many things. You can only run so fast. And then there's this zone around you that you need to stretch yourself so you can get better. But that requires people. Uh, 
hopefully Francie and me, uh, to help you kind of reach these outside goals. Um, and then, I mean, you can just read it. So basically, you need help, um, and hopefully we can be that help. And then also, your uh, teammates, it's a lot better, to get, it's a lot easier to get faster when you're running with people. Um, so we're gonna try to be working together at all times. So starting with this transition that we're gonna start mainly starting with cross country is we're gonna have some different expectations than we've had in the past and ideally that is that you're going to follow is this on? Yeah, I can't tell when I'm talking. Follow so the idea is that you're gonna follow the trend that we have. And if you want to deviate, you're gonna have to let us know because we do have a structured plan, there's a method to the madness. And if you wanna go and do a different workout or you want to do a different mileage per week, or you're listening to somebody else, uh, somebody else that might be coaching you, you need to let us know just so that we can plan for that. And so if you go off and do your own thing, um, which hopefully you don't do too much, but if you go and do that, we at least have an idea of what you're doing. So that goes into strong communication. You just need to talk with us. We'll talk about that more later in the training log. But daily, we're going to have communication via the log. Nathan and I will review that. Um, each week that'll go into the mileage that we send you, the workouts that we send you, it'll all be tailored, some of it to an individual basis, but you'll all be in individual groups. Uh, so again, the training log later. And then that you're dedicated to the team. So you all come out to the club because hopefully you all believe that you're gonna get faster being here than you would just running on your own. Uh, it's a social organization. And like Nathan was saying before, there's a lifestyle that revolves around this. You need to dedicate to that lifestyle so it's training that we do out of practice. School obviously is part of it in that balance. And then doing the other ancillary things like sleep, taking care of your body and nutrition. And then the goals are gonna depend on what you want. Uh, everyone when they filled out the questionnaire put in what you wanted to do this season. We just put a few different categories there. You might have something different in mind. And that also dictated which group we put you in. So some of you have different experience running. Some of you just wanna come out to have fun or just to be social. Other people are really here to get fast. Um, so you decide on that. In general, everyone is, we hope that everyone is gonna improve in their general fitness. So with the training, the purpose is that it's, we're all gonna get you faster. Just like I said, it's gonna be organized and structured, not a little bit more structured than it was before. Quite a bit more structured, I think. And then for most people, it'll be nationals, not most people, It'll be, there'll be a nationals orientation to it in that the whole season will be structured to end when nationals ends as far as cross country training goes. We have four different phases. They're loosely adapted from Joe Rubio who uh, coached the Nike farm team back in the day and who built this awesome manual. We're basing our phases off of that. We'll talk about those a little bit later. And then uh, we're not gonna go too much into recovery but recovery is a really important aspect of training. You can't can't run well unless you're recovering every day, eight hours of sleep a night, etc. And the nutrition, we're going to talk about that later, but that's also important. So yeah, as we mentioned, we're going to have some groups. Uh, groups this year, I know, I think two years ago, we kind of tried to have groups, but again, it's kind of hard to follow through with that, but hopefully now it will be more structured. Um, talking about pace, so we're going to get this into the details. Um, we'll have, we'll explain like different workout paces and uh, versus like maintenance run, which is normal runs. Uh, mileage, so I know um, some of you have come from schools or uh, coaches who like to peak at a, or, sorry, peak at a, peak at a mileage. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know, this season I'm, I'm shooting for like, you know, 80 miles or 40 miles and then you come up and then you maybe come down a little. Um, but what we're going to be doing is kind of getting up to a mileage early on and then just kind of holding it throughout the season. Um, so more on that later. Injury, again, that goes with recovering stuff, but um, we'll talk about more of that during the season. And then form, uh, something we want to incorporate is kind of work on everyone's form. Some people have excellent form, some people not so much, um, but just having good form is free speed. Um, so we'll be working on that. What's not free, shoes. Um, it's really the only thing you need for running, you know, for preaching to the choir, but you know, good shoes go a long way, about like 300, 400 miles. Um, so, Make sure you get yourself a good pair of shoes. Uh, our training is going to be structured around like an 80-20 rule, which means like if you have 100% of your miles for a week, 80% of it's going to be the long, slow stuff, so maintenance runs and long runs, and then 20% of it is going to be workouts, so tempos, frontlicks, um, intervals, and 
So for an example, if you're running a 30 mile week, maybe two days of the week you'll be doing three miles worth of intensity. So whether that's tempos or intervals, so that'd be like three miles worth of and then, of course, down weeks or off days, um, this goes back to the recovery and whatnot. So we're going to incorporate or suggest when to take down, uh, take mileage off or take a day off. So some people like to just go down to mileage for that week. Some people like to take a day off. So again, uh, we'll be working with you to figure out what's going to work best. So that was an outline of training. Um, I'm terms. Um, all right, so really quick, we'll just, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but you've got your maintenance and maintenance, normal run, aerobic run, recovery run, whatever you want to call it. This is pretty much every day, it's not a workout, every day is a workout, but we consider workouts uh, the intensity stuff. So you need to be at like a consistent pace, and uh, we like to say conversation pace, so if you can't talk to the, the person next to you, you're probably going a little too fast. Um, and these will vary anywhere from 5 to 10 miles. Um, and then again, once we have your groups, we'll kind of prescribe a, a pace range for those people in each group. Um, long run, uh, hopefully mostly on Sundays, but this is going to be about 20 to 25 percent of your weekly mileage. So you got 50 mile a week, that would be 10 mile only. Um, and these, we're going to stress this this year. Um, we're going to try to have these long runs at your maintenance uh, run pace. So I know some people including myself, would like to just like hammer long runs and feel great, um, but really the plan is not to do that. Um, just kind of getting the distance in, that's really all you need. Um, so that's that last bullet. And then workouts, so there's three really kind of different categories. There's the threshold and tempo, which is going to be hard effort from anywhere like 20 to 50 minutes. And again, we'll help you, well it says 10 to 15 seconds slower than like your race pace, but we'll help you figure that out. Um, and these are going to be kind of like once a week, and then the intervals, also again once a week, um, and it's going to be anywhere from 30 seconds, like 200s and 150s, uh, to anything in the 2 to 4 minute range, so 800 to like 1200. Um, and then mixed, it's going to be a combination of both, so expect these throughout the season, um, and again, or not again, but weirder to start intervals, tempo thresholds uh, pretty early on, that's part of the plan, and we'll explain some of that uh, right now. So on those four phases that we're basing the season off of, phase one is sort of this base or just intro part of the season. It'll start next Sunday. We're starting our weeks on Sunday because that's how calendars are run. That's how the world, the whole world runs. There are like five of you that base your weeks off of Monday. So we're going to do Sunday. And starting next Sunday is going to be when you'll start following our training plan. We're going to send that out every, I think we decided every week we're going to send something out to you. We're going to update that daily or roughly daily. Um, first phase is going from essentially zero this week up to, depending on your group, between 25 and about 50 miles. And so that'll end mid-June about when finals end. So this is pretty easy from now until the end of finals. You have a pretty easy part of training, but, and then we'll go into the different phases. Phase two, that's when you'll start this aerobic endurance phase where You'll be focusing on not the long, necessarily the longer, slower stuff, but you'll be building aerobic endurance, trying to maximize your VO2 max, and getting in more intervals, increasing the intervals throughout the throughout that part of the season. Phase three will start in about what is that? August, mid-August, uh, when we'll start really increasing the intensity of the workouts, increasing the volume as well. That'll be the, possibly the hardest part of the season. Phase four, start to taper. They'll only be about three weeks until nationals. So again, this is focused on nationals. For those of you that are doing other races, like maybe you're not going to nationals, but you want to do the turkey trot or CIM, this is really adjustable to that. So that'll work for you too. And then post-season, all of this will incorporate into the true base phase in January, February, March, leading into track. So real quick, um, for intervals, again, we said 30 seconds or two to four minutes. Uh, so basically, at these two time points, uh, you're using a different metabolism, uh, your body, or a different system. Uh, so that's really what we're focusing on. Um, this is where you get the best results. And we want to say the long run doesn't need to be that fast, because uh, towards the tail of that graph, um, you're getting the benefit just by going the distance uh, and being on your feet for that long. So that's why we're saying don't hammer the long runs. 
Um, but then the 30 seconds and two to four minutes can be pretty hard, uh, but nothing like you guys have, haven't done, most of you, so um, very similar to what we have been doing, but with more structure, more thought behind it, um, and probably a little different because we're going to be starting things a little early. That's all I want to say about that. This is a pretty important slide. I hope it's not too hard to see. Yeah, so what we have here is, imagine on the far left, I just put care because that's essentially zeros. That's your current fitness. That's when you start to work out. So you have a workout in the evening. 6 p.m. is the far left. That's where we're starting. During the workout and directly after, you have fatigue. And your fitness, we can say, goes down during that time. So after the workout, your fitness might not be quite as good. Then you have this recovery period. And this is all some sort of log scale. These, these are not necessarily separated into perfect quarters. But this recovery period from maybe 8 p.m. when you finish your workout lasts all the way until the next, the next day and can last into, the next, into further weeks. But essentially this recovery period after the workout and then it's important to get all the way back up to the level that you were before so that then you can increase back up to adaptation. And if you don't recover enough, you can go back into regression decrease all the way down to you to your fitness before you started the workout workout and then even regress uh, regress to a lower fitness and so what we're looking at here are three different scenarios that can happen with different types of training on the top is our ideal situation where we have the same four phases fatigue recovery adaptation regression except instead of that regression you have simply fatigue recovery, adaptation, and then recovery and adaptation kind of meld together. That's ideally what you're doing is you're balancing adaptation and recovery such that you recover so much after each run that you can then adapt to each, uh, each concurrent workout and you're increasing your adaptation over time. While your fitness might go down for a week or even over a month a little bit with some of the training you're doing, or it may appear that it goes down, you're adapting over time. And then the middle scenario is a stagnation phase where if you're not increasing your fitness, it can result from, and these bottom two can result from undertraining, overtraining, or the wrong kind of training. Or where you're doing training, no, it's just this screen. Or where you're doing training like you're doing a lot of biking and a lot of running. You're not going to get good at both. That's what can happen in stagnation or true regression where you're either undertraining, overtraining, doing the wrong kind of training. It just goes down over time such that there's no adaptation and your recovery is too poor. So, talking about the phases now, the base phase, everyone's here, it's finals, start to establish your good routines, including recovery and the nutrition, your sleep habits that you might have during the summer. Uh, it's going to be four weeks long, building mileage to about 70% of what your max mileage is going to be. So, for those of you that are going to be doing 70 miles a week, you'll get up to about 50, maybe 52 miles by the end of these four weeks, which is pretty manageable. So, you'll go from zero this week to maybe 25 next week. Uh, we'll start intervals, thresholds, and tempos. All of those, the intervals are not going to be scary. They're going to be moderately paced and few and far between. Uh, we'll do strides once or twice a week. We have to increase, well, I won't get into too much science, but it's important to increase what's called phosphate capacity. You've got to get your legs speed up. So we'll do strides throughout the whole season. And then by the end of the four weeks, ideally you have a long run established. For some of you, it'll only be eight or nine miles. For some of you, it'll be about 12. And then phase two, we really get into what some of you maybe, maybe have called like in high school, this base or these really long miles in summer, aerobic endurance. This is when you'll have your weekly routine established where you have a long run and two workouts. Uh, intervals are gonna be a little bit more intense, a little bit longer, higher volume. Uh, thresholds and tempos are going to form the base of this portion of the workouts. Uh, like Nathan put here, thousands and twelve hundreds are going to be the bread and butter. Uh, leg speed, again, those strides all the way up to two hundreds. Um, the long run length is going to be limited. We'll talk. Are we going to talk about that one? Yeah. So it's going to differ depending on where you are, but generally, long runs are going to be no more than fifteen miles. If we're doing an AK. It's it's not good for you to be doing more than fifteen. Miles. That's just what we mean by limited long run. And then you're up to 100% mileage at this point. It goes to sleep, I don't know why it says that. Uh, so again, you're getting in this work, you're not pace obsessive, don't hammer the miles on any of the runs. It starts to get tough, 
when Nathan said long, slow miles before, it just it's all relative. It doesn't mean it's slow and easy. It just means it's long, that you're going to have a lot of miles, it's going to be long, you're going to have to pound them out, and you're going to have to communicate with us during this whole time in the summer and commit to the training. So just real quick, this is what the week is going to look like. With a little bit of flexibility for Tuesday, Thursday workouts, that might get moved to Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Saturday, just remain, remain flexible, but this is going to be our main schedule throughout the whole rest of the season, the whole 20 and then phase four, taper phase. Um, so when we, <laughs> when we meet taper, uh, bring down the mileage, but not quite uh, the intensity. We'll be doing some shorter intervals, but um, really getting the legs going. You guys have put in all the work for your base, so now it's time to sharpen up. Um, and then we'll yeah, bring mileage down. Uh, so volume decreases, intensity is going to increase in this last part. Same with a little bit of phase three. Um, yeah, more intervals, uh, and this is really uh, key is focusing on staying healthy. Um, so, you know, you're teeter-tottering between, I don't want to say like injury every time you're training. Um, so, but stay, focus on staying healthy because at this point in the season, like there's not much work left to do. So if you, I don't want to say missed out on something, but you don't want to like, you know, it's not like a test, well, you can't cram for it. Well, I guess some people do, but you don't want to cram. Don't get sick. Yeah. You don't want to like cram your mileage or like cram your workout. Um, at this point, it's really focused on, I guess, you want to, you had to be overcooked or undercooked. You got to be undercooked if that's the case, but otherwise, you guys should be feeling great. Um, but yeah, this is getting ready for uh, the last races, getting fast, um, or nationals, or turkey trot, or any of the road races you guys are interested in that might go to. So, yeah. Um, so the training log. Um, <laughs> This is how we're going to be communicating with you guys, uh, like on a general sense, but then we'll obviously be checking in with you. So, um, you can pull it up if you want right now. Or wait, let me just, with prior element. Oh yeah, so, I know some of you guys use Strava, I know you guys have your own logs, but for us to see what's going on and we can help you and kind of like, so you guys can also see what everyone else is doing. Um, it's really important that you record things on the log, not just like miles or not just like the time. We need to know kind of the ins and outs, so if you come to us with questions, like we can look and be like, okay, you did this and that. Like maybe that was a little fast, or that was <clears throat> too slow, or like you can bump it up or turn it back. So we need to see. Just we're not asking for like you know everything, but just at least what miles, uh, pace, and just kind of how you felt. And then if you're doing a workout, um, the splits for that, just so because information is key. Um, it's like data. So yeah, if you want to pull up the training log, fancy will. And then so yeah, we just want to help you guys help yourselves. So. So like, like Nathan was saying before, it's really important that it's not just mileage, that you have the notes in there on how you felt, because if it was a terrible workout, we're not going to know. If you, if you aren't feeling good, we can see that, we can track that over time, and we can decrease your mileage, adjust your intervals. So all the paces are really important. Uh, these are all just preliminary groups, so if you see your name somewhere and you're really pissed off, just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. What are you doing? I was trying to show you. Okay. Don't 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 worry about it too much. So your name is, is the mouse up there? Yeah. Okay. Name name would be over here on the left. So Ben, did you run this much this week? I doubt that. A lot of Netflix apparently. Some of you came from some lower mileage programs, so I know you. Some of you said, you know, did 40, 50. I want to jump up to 60, 70, but we're gonna kind of. Keep you a little lower for now because transitioning into uh, training for an 8K is a lot more. So, um, but yeah, again, you can come check it out. And there's the C group and D group, no gender groups. Uh, it's just, you know, however, not fast you are, but whatever you're capable of, you know, let's go in the respective groups. And we think four groups is enough for the people we're working with. Um, uh, not much else right now. Oh, uh, okay. Raising logistics. It's really early. We're not going to start racing until uh, September. Um, so we got San Francisco. It's in Golden Gate Park. Really nice. This is, I don't know when school starts this year. Or next year. So is that? Okay, so this is right before school starts. So if anyone's going to be here, we'll head over. Um, it's a good, we'll be training through this one. It'll be treated as like your tempo threshold. Uh, Capital Cross, if you're here 
this year for cross country. We went to that meet, a lot of fun. Stanford meet is not happening this year, which is the same weekend, so a lot more teams might show up to this one. Not that it wasn't bad last year, it was really fast last year. Um, on a golf course, fast, fun, kind of test yourself. Uh, all that summer training paying off. Um, and then another San Francisco meet, also in Golden Gate Park. Uh, that one's on Friday, so hard to go to, but uh, we'll be training through that. That's a good kind of, if you haven't raced yet, good time to uh, test your fitness and get in a race before the next meet, which is the Santa Clara Invitational. Probably the best meet for us um, as a club to run fast time and have a good time. Um, yeah, it's a fast course. And then there's the regional meet, which again, is going to be um, San Mateo, but it's like Belmont, whatever. Uh, but hilly course, um, so that's fine. But that's going to be all, oh, all these meets besides regionals and nationals are we're racing against unattached runners, other club teams, and then like Vision 2 or uh, community colleges. So um, hodgepodge, but you guys, are gonna be, you guys are gonna do well, so don't worry about that. And there's Doc Adams uh, here in Davis, so if you haven't raced and you want to get in the race, um, Doc Adams is good, it's local, uh, it's like easy to get to, so no, no uh, expectation, well, no, it's not no expectations, but really low key, um, good time to kind of just have fun. Um, nationals this year is going to be in East Lansing, Michigan, so I think that's by the lakes or something. Uh, it's not <laughs> oh, like Lake Michigan. Okay. Um, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be fun. Uh, more logistics on like nationals, like how many spots who are taking uh, later, but part of that or what goes into that is gonna be if you've been updating the log, uh, kind of going in practice and helping out. So I don't know if we'll continue the log through the school year, but okay, sure. Um, and then the turkey trot right after nationals, so you still be fit, it'll still be fresh, you'll be even have one more week of taper, so hammer out 5k or 10k or half marathon. And then, of course, the turkey trots at home. Um, come back, Shaw, uh, win it. So, and then uh, just the ones with the stars, there's no official date yet, but it's probably gonna be that because it was like that same week last year, but not 100% sure yet. Any questions? Or you guys just wanna hang out? We've got, I think, we've got done in a pretty good manner, but couldn't cover everything, could cover a lot more. Uh, Yes, sir.